Good morning, friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Rightway Options, and this is the morning market preparation video for March 30th, 2020. So last week we had kind of a, well, a nice little rally uh, toward the end of the week. And I got to, I got to be honest, I expected a little bit more bearishness going into the weekend than what we actually saw. So how about we settle in, grab ourselves something to drink, and let's get ready for the Monday edition of the Morning Market Prep and see what the technicals have to show us for this week. So this morning we take a look here at these charts and take a look at some of the technicals and I gotta admit, a little bit better than I would have originally expected um, going into Friday with such wildly rising um, uh, numbers on uh, infection rates and, and death tolls here in the United States. As you can see, looking at this chart, and I want to adjust this line just a little tiny bit, um, as you can see here in this chart on the diamonds, we rallied up and we had broken through this resistance here of that 2018 um, low, broke through, but were unable to hold on to it at the end of the day. However, we did hold on to our eight exponential moving average, held it as support, here in hit and run candlesticks and right way options, we call that the T line. And the T line is suggesting that, well, at least we had a nice little crossover that price, at least for the moment, wants to hold up there. Now, albeit we left behind a rather bearish looking candle pattern, but remember that bearish looking candle pattern must have a follow through to be valid. So that would mean we would need to see that follow through to the downside to break. What this may mean is that we're going to try and consolidate along this resistance area right in here, trying to hold up in this um, range, which could be overall bullish. If we can hold up here and pop on through, that would be a potential bullish signal. Of course, we can also consolidate across this area here and um, ultimately end up then failing out of this box um, headed to the downside. Now there's some conflicting stories out there, conflicting things to think about. Um, number one, historically, well, I should say since 2005, April has been a very good month for the market. It's been bullish, closed bullish on the month um, since 2005. But we have different situation here today than we have ever experienced in the market with uh, coronavirus really growing and expanding here throughout the United States. So I'm not sure we can count on what his history has is telling us, but we also have, um, at the same time, we have Goldman Sachs now suggesting um, that the market will turn lower once again. They have put out a report they expect it to turn lower. Obviously, we have some issues with oil prices. Oil prices are uh, tremendously under pressure. There is um, a lot of talk that oil may drop below $20 a barrel. That obviously could put some tremendous pressure on the market. And we also have um, um, a very clear situation where gold, gold is being bought up pretty heavily. Now, some of this could be because of the devaluation of the dollar that gold rose so much last week, but certainly something to be paid attention to as the market tries to hold up. And we've got several other things that really are concerning. We rallied strongly yesterday, and at the same time, we saw the VIX unable to really sell off. The VIX fear staying very, very high, even as we rallied significantly last week. So kind of an interesting situation here for the market. A lot of tough decisions are going to have to be made as we move forward. Um, obviously, you've heard that the president has extended the country's lockdown until April 30th. 
that is obviously going to have significant ramifications for companies um, around uh, the United States. And obviously, um, issues around the world are continuing to expand and grow and change. It's difficult to put your finger on anything um, at the moment. As I speak, the Dow futures are trying to put on a brave face. They're trying to go positive. Um, we saw mostly negative um, numbers last night in Asia. We did have have um, Australian stocks kind of broke ranks with the rest of Asian markets and rallied significantly up 7%. Um, European stocks have been in, had a really, really choppy market um, today. They've been fluctuating um, right around flatline, but very, very choppy. Seen a few positive prints and then drop right back down. Very, very choppy, and we could experience that this morning. But the diamonds or the Dow futures are really trying hard to put on a brave face this morning. Um, be really, really careful, and remember, we don't want to be buying into a gap up open as we rush right into a price resistance in the chart. So be careful of that. That price resistance is obviously, well, it's just one of those things that we have to respect, and particularly in a market that is so volatile, we want to respect those resistance levels as we push up toward those. So watch that closely. Now let's take a look at the SPY real quickly. SPY, um, once again, a pretty nice close on Friday, better than I was expecting. We pushed up into this price resistance in the chart, as you can see right here, this little these price lows back here in 2018. Pushed up into there, but unfortunately was unable to hold it by the close. So one of the things we're going to want to do is we're going to want to keep a pretty close eye on um, this price resistance level in here. And if we start pushing back up, we'll want to watch the subsequent levels of resistance. And I would suggest right up here would be the first one we have to grapple with if we're going to move higher. So let's watch that closely as that continues to try and lift up just a little bit and watch those resistance levels in the chart. Let's take a look at the Qs. Now the Qs probably had the best circumstance of all the indexes on Friday. Managing to close above its 500 day moving average and holding it, um, just held it at the close, even though we had kind of this bearish pattern show up right here at price resistance in the chart, and by the way, if we back this up, there's a lot of price resistance in here, just a, 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 a junky price action, I would say, that we're gonna have to deal with. So it's gonna be really, really important, uh, I think, for us to hold above that 500-day. We don't wanna see this drift back down and lose that 500-day again. If it can hold up in this area, um, that would be a nice thing to see, but also, it may be really difficult with the numbers we're starting to see in these infections and the impacts to these companies. Let's take a look at IWM. IWM um, rallied um, during the day, sold off at the end of the day like the other indexes, but a um, little bit more bullish than I would have originally expected. And as you can see, holding up here, pushing against some price resistance. This has a long ways to go to recover that 2018 low. So let's watch that price resistance in the chart and see how we handle that. Once again, holding above that eight exponential moving average. Let's take a look, um, a quick look at the VIX. Now the VIX, I got to be honest, is really, really concerning. And if we take a look, um, put some drawings on here, as you can see, we're holding kind of floating right here in midair. We have some price support in the chart right here. And of course, we're banging, our, we've banged our head against that resistance of the 2008 um, high in the VIX. So we're kind of floating around here in this mid range. What I found interesting all last week is as we tried to rally, the VIX just didn't care. The VIX didn't really move, um, meaning that fear remains very high. What that tells us is we should expect volatility remain very high and it's making it very very difficult to trade anything in options because the bid ask spreads are so wide um, options are incredibly expensive 
Um, so we're going to have to watch that pretty closely here if the VIX is going to remain that high. Expect and plan for very volatile price, pro, uh, price action, very quick reversals can occur in a market like that. So watch that close. If we take a look at T2122, it's the four week new high, new low ratio. And you can see T2122 rallied up nicely, finally coming off of that bottom. Boy, we've been oversold for so long. It's nice to see that little bit of relief turned a bit lower at the end of the day on Friday with that selling coming in. But let's keep an eye on this. As long as we can kind of hold up in this range, we could maybe move on up a little bit higher. We're certainly still um, quite oversold in the market. It's just whether or not there's going to be enough buyers out there picking up um, this market um, with so many things still up in the air and so much uncertainty on that path forward. Let's take a quick look at our economic calendar for uh, today. And it's going to be interesting. Our economic calendar has a lot on it this week that we're going to have to pay attention to. Oops, excuse me. Has a lot on it that we're going to have to pay attention to. And as you can see, an awful lot in, in this calendar. Now, first off today, not so much. We just have pending home sales here at 10 o'clock to maybe move the market around. But let's keep in mind, we're transitioning over to a new month. So we've got a lot of economic data this week. We've got uh, CoreLogic, Chicago PMI, Consumer Confidence. You can see ADP comes out here on Wednesday. We can expect those jobs numbers to not be too good. We've got PMI Manufacturing, ISM, and this is all going to uh, roll itself up into Friday's employment situation number, which I have to kind of expect is not going to be um, a very bullish number uh, for this month. So we're going to want to watch that pretty closely as we head toward uh, the end of the month. If we can hold up any bullishness in here, that would be a great thing. Um, but with so much data coming at us, it may be a rather rough week. By the way, as I'm speaking, Dow futures are now down 20 points. So you can see we have this fluctuation going on in prices. Um, expect a lot of volatility to continue. On the earnings front, we have a big day of earnings, but to tell you the truth, not very many of those companies are going to be market moving companies. Although we have 225, we're just kind of cleaning up a lot of the very small cap penny type stocks um, for the month in here so kind of keep that in mind even though there's a lot of earnings probably not much movement in the market as a result however there are a couple that we might want to pay attention to they move that restoration hardware um, earnings to today so we'll want to kind of keep a, an eye on restoration hardware um, looks like it's trying to move up just slightly this morning um, we'll want to watch that and I did come up CALM which has been anything but calm as you can see in this wild wild price action trying to um, move higher this morning we'll have to wait and see but um, obviously food farm products things like that kind of a defensive sector may do better than um, a lot of companies right now but I wouldn't expect this to really be a market moving event today so uh, pretty rough pretty rough on the market let's um, take a look at some stocks that could be setting up but before we do that if you guys could do me a favor if this is the first time you've seen these videos, if you could please click that subscribe button on YouTube and also click that bell icon when it pops up so you can make sure and be notified every time I post one of these videos. You know, hopefully you're seeing that these videos are a little bit different. The information is a little bit different what you might see out there in the market or filled with prediction and filled with um, you know, speculation and hype. I just want to look at the technicals of the chart and really hone in on how I want to 
um, deal with the market for the day. And that's all I'm looking for is how should I be preparing for today? Do I even want to be involved today? What kind of preparation do I need to be making here? I want to look at the support resistance of, of stocks. I want to see what could be affecting price. And if you guys find that helpful, if you could please click that thumbs up button and also leave a brief comment. I truly appreciate it. It helps us continue to grow the channel, reaching out to more folks. And we're quickly, we're headed toward 10,000 subscribers. So thank you, everyone. You guys are awesome. I truly, truly appreciate it. Now, some of the places you might look for some trades, but I got to tell you, it's going to be very, very challenging. And, and I wouldn't want anyone to, to think that I'm really recommending out there that you buy up a bunch of stocks. And here's the thing. There's a lot of talk out there about buying up value, buy up value, buy, 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 buy up value. And talking heads, you know, marching across the screen all over the place, talking about buying up value. Yet at the same time, Goldman Sachs has a report out suggesting that the market will turn lower again. And, you know, we see lots and lots of pressure to the oil market. We see lots and lots of pressure in the stocks. And we've extended our, our sh countrywide shutdown here till the end of next month. And that doesn't bode really well for a lot of stocks. So consider carefully if you're thinking about buying up stocks as a value play it means that you're going to have to hold them through significant volatility and be willing to hold them all the way through the possibility of a test retest of the lows remember a very common pattern in the market for a bottom is a w where we retest those lows now it may not be a full retest of those lows but let's watch that closely so if you're thinking thinking about picking up value plays remember you're going to have to be willing to hold those through significant pullbacks in k um, just for those retests and remember these are thousands of points in move um, here in the dow another very very common bottoming pattern of course, we saw this in 2008. We push down, we rally back up, and then we see a new low. That's how we build an inverted head and shoulders pattern in a chart. And if Goldman Sachs happens to be right, and I certainly couldn't or wouldn't say that they are, it's a prediction like anything else, that that bottom means uh, we've got a lot more volatility to come, a lot more pressure and pain on the market. So think about that carefully if you're thinking about picking up those value plays. It, it doesn't seem to me to be the technical patterns yet that we can rush into the market feeling comfortable about where the market goes from here. I think there's just way too much uncertainty. So consider that every time I show one of these stocks. Now, some of the places you might look, you know, are some of these consumer cyclical, um, consumer def uh, defensive um, type stocks. Um, you know, Starbucks. Starbucks did a really good job of rallying back up off of its low. Now it needs to prove some support. And you can see pulling back here on Friday, we want to make sure that if this does um, find its support, we get a higher low placed in here. And that's where I would be looking to buy. I want to see proof that buyers are going to hold and then I can maybe buy off of that point. I want to also be really watching and respectful of price resistance. I don't believe and I don't think this is going to be just a zoom back up market. I think we're going to struggle quite, a, quite hard um, in this move back up. Remember, Congress has all but laid out a plan that there's going to be more stimulus plans to come because they don't believe we're going to come out of this very quickly. So watch that closely. Keep that in mind. Other places you might look are stocks like Microsoft. Microsoft has a massive cash hoard. They're going to continue to pay their dividends. 
Microsoft having last week broken through its downtrend, now it needs to prove that support. Got back above its 200 day, and I think it's going to be really important that we hold that 200 day as support. Maybe if we could even calm down some of that price action in here, that would be bullish for the market and give us that opportunity to move back higher. So we're starting to see some of those techs trying to pick up, trying to hold up some of those places that could find that support. Now remember, we're still going to need things like food and we're going to need things like um, all of those consumer uh, type stocks. We're going to need those financials to start coming back around. So a place you might want to look if you like financials, you might want to take a look at like XLF if you want to pick up a basket of financials might be a place to look now as you can see in this move that we made here we broke this downtrend breaking that downtrend is important but now we need to see proof that we can hold some price support in this chart and start to move back up so let's watch that close if we can find some of that price support I can't tell you um, if any of these areas are going to hold. I can tell you that we can expect lots of volatility. And remember, we have a massive week of economic data that we face. So we could see a lot of volatility in this market. If you are um, an inexperienced trader, um, unable to trade really quick intraday trades, or don't have a big tolerance for risk, I hate to say it, but it still may be a really good time to just be standing on the sideline protecting that capital because there's going to be significant risk in this market. That path forward is very clouded and very murky, and there's just so much uncertainty. It's probably full of different kinds of traps and pitfalls. So be very careful. Remember, we still have the propensity for very big overnight reversals and news driven events. So watch that market very carefully, plan very carefully, and remember to protect your capital. Everyone, I want to wish you all a fantastic week of trading. I wish you all of the best, and I'll see you right back here, bright and early Tuesday morning. Have a good one, everyone.